But you know what's not super funny, chat? And this is the way I'm going to introduce this segment. You know what isn't super funny, chat? Nine eleven, Not funny at all. Just saying that makes it sound like I'm being sarcastic. Isn't that wild? Just saying it. 9-11 is not funny. It sounds like I'm saying it's funny. I'm not. I'm saying it isn't. Because it wasn't. Now, there's a long and broad history of why 9-11 occurred. If you are in your 20s... You probably have a very minimal recollection, unless you're late 20s, you probably have a very minimal recollection of 9-11. So, I got like a hair in my mouth? Ugh. <laughs> um, I remember 9-11 uh, for sure. Um, I absolutely remember 9-11. Uh, we had to uh, watch it on the TV screens in my, I think, 7th grade math class or some shit. Um, sixth grade, somewhere in there. And, um, yeah, it wasn't funny at the time. It, um, now since then, I mean, like, I, I don't really know anybody in it, so I don't have, like, this personal connection to it. But, uh, yeah, that's a bad fucking day for everybody involved, really. Like, everybody involved had a bad, bad day. And a lot of people had, like, really serious PTSD from it and stuff, so we're not gonna, like, make a ton of 9-11 jokes here. Probably not any, so, uh, uh, that's kind of what, what, what we're doing here. But, um, you weren't even live yet. But I wanted to talk about this article that is so fucking stupid. So fucking stupid. Waller's me. Thank you so much for the two months. You are not stupid. You're cool. Thanks for the... Ow! Ow! Ah! Ah! I stabbed myself with the corner of my book. With the corner of my Dungeon Master's Guide, I stabbed myself. Um... So this, this, uh, article came out. Today, oh, on purpose. Maps and Mimics, thanks so much for the five gifted tier one subs, dude. Thank you for that. Huge. You went to Color Freud, Factory of Sadness, Ace of Spades, uh, Annie B and Recoil. Um, here's this. This is uh, when the politics of victimhood turned violent. <sighs> okay, this is the worst article that I've probably read on the subject. And that says a lot. I grew up in the 9-11 age, guys. I grew up in it. For those of us in our like thirties, you like you like <laughs> late twenties, somewhere in the thirties. Man, what a weird time to be alive. Even the left leaning people were like, "Yeah, let's fucking go to war," because we got we got attacked, right? We did. We got attacked, and it was weird because Americans are very blasé about shit. We live a very privileged life, and that was up. There was some upheaval to that privilege for a while. And I'm not saying it was a good thing. It wasn't. I don't actually think 9/11 did any good for anybody anywhere. Um, I actually think it made America worse in a lot of ways, and it exacerbated the problem. I don't think Osama bin Laden. I think he'd be happy with with what that he caused America to be shitty for 20 years. Um, but I don't think that he would be happy. And I mean, well, he got shot and murdered. Uh, well, I mean, is it murder at that point? But uh, he definitely got revenged upon by the United States. Um, and uh, uh, I'm sure was not happy about that. But um, <laughs> I don't think it accomplished anything good at all. Like, usually when when we go through, like, a big upheaval... Um, like World War II, for instance, I would say it's good that, that the Nazis got tamped out. I would say it's, you know, overall World War II was really bad, but like, I would say there are good, there's silver linings to the bad thing, right? Oh, okay. We did this. But then of course, on the back end of that, we started to cause this with, uh, allied people. I mean, this starts, this starts deep. I mean, this is deep roots in like cultural, um, um, like, like, I don't even describe that. The way that people organize themselves in the Middle East and anywhere, but we, and I say we loosely, allies and and um, uh, pretty much Western countries, after the war, decided basically to break up these different countries, not on like social lines or or you know uh, 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 communal lines, community lines. They they did it just based on where they wanted to draw lines and kind of like geography. And uh, so you have a, a big problems with uh, uh, like like Iraq, Afghanistan, 
um, Pakistan. Uh, you have a lot of problems when people get sort of moved around and mixed up. And that led to a ton of upheaval. And pretty much World War II is the progenitor of all the problems that we have in the Middle East uh, modernly. Um, insofar as like just like it, it sort of mixed people together to, to co-govern in places where they shouldn't. And then they wanted that because of their ancestral land and whatever. So uh, we have a whole bunch to go through for this. But uh, this is a bad fucking article. Um, closed on a Tuesday with 50 biddies. I was 19 when 9-11 happened. I was in New York at the time and saw it all go down live in real time. So, yeah, lots of PTSD. It's also my birthday, so that's fun. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, fucking, it's, a, it's a fucking rough one. Um, <laughs> Patriot Act was a huge blow. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, th- I actually think it made the U.S. worse. I actually think it... Um, the Treaty of Versailles, yeah. Uh, I actually think, I actually think uh, Osama bin Laden exacerbated what he didn't like about America. But uh, this motherfucker right here, Brendan O'Neill, is uh, the, the editor of this and apparently the person who wrote this. This is the dumbest fucking thesis to, a, to an argument I've ever heard. This is bad. I'm going to read this to you. 20 years on from 9-11, Osama bin Laden is still viewed as the ultimate evil outsider, the foreign enemy who brought death and destruction to America, the implacable foe of the West and of modernity more broadly. The footage of him in modest dress and humble surroundings in some holdout in Afghanistan, belying his Saudi origins and his vast wealth, contrasts with the gleaming opulence and swagger of the city he sent his men to savagely attack on 11th September 2001. Uh, people maybe forget. Oh, Osama bin Laden was a millionaire. Like, he was a really well off dude. Um, and so he was more of, he like funded a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Here we go. And yet the truth about bin Laden and about 9-11 itself has always been more complicated than this. In many ways, bin Laden was as much a product of the West, and in particular of its political politics of grievance, as he was its most feared terroristic enemy. His reign, this is the worst part, his reign of terror can be seen as a violent manifestation of what has since become to be known as wokeness. Wokeness. Osama bin Laden. Wokeness. The word means nothing. Nothing! Osama bin Laden, bro. Okay. On the anniversary of 9-11... He's going to defend this. And the anniversary of 9-11 is worth reflecting for the millionth time. For the millionth time, no doubt, on just how unusual this act of barbarism was. Despite a rush of, was it barbarous? Uh, I mean, it was definitely not good, but I don't know. It was pretty sophisticated. Like, I, I think we do a disservice to ourselves and to everybody else when we say that this was just like some sort of like savage, dumb, dumb attack that got lucky. Like, this was a, I mean, say what you will. It was a, it was a very, very patient, uh, uh thing to do to like i mean just just the just the logistics of it was ridiculous uh not to mention i mean i mean the the intelligence agencies in the, in the united states did a terrible job but uh despite a rush of commentators in the 2001 same shamelessly claiming that the attack on the twin towers in the pentagon was violent payback for america's geopolitical crimes and apocalyptic revolt against its unabashed national egotism and arrogance in the words of then guardian writer seamus milna uh, I don't know how to say that. Milne, maybe? Uh, in reality, 9-11 lacked any of the tangible statements or sentiments of traditional forms of anti-Western terrorism. There were no demands, no list of complaints, no requests to release certain pr- prisoners or to remove Western armies from certain countries. Indeed, the only audible statement made by an Al-Qaeda operative on 9-11 itself was, We have some planes. Those words were uttered by Muhammad Atta, the chief hijacker to air control chiefs, shortly before he crashed American Airlines Flight 11 to the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Okay, so that's not necessarily true. Um, for months, maybe a year, maybe three years. I mean, the, the planning took a long time. Um, yeah, I, I guess, H, H, <laughs> I guess. Thank you for the uh, 50 bitties. Um, Osama bin Laden, for months... Like he's not gonna say like oh oh like we're gonna we're gonna do stuff um, necessarily like specifically like he's not he's not gonna be like this is why we're doing it and here's why I mean Osama bin Laden kept popping up on intelligence radars and there was like stories at t- like he was a known person um, and he was like um, eventually we're gonna do a fucking thing like we're just gonna do it like if you watch any of those old Osama bin Laden like pre nine eleven uh, videos. Um, 
I mean, he made his goals relatively clear. Um, so there's a whole bunch of history that goes into Afghanistan. I hope some of you know it. But just in case you don't, I will give you a very... It's the spark notes of spark notes. This is not as much information as you need. You should go read a book on it or something. Dexter Filkins does a good job. You can read that. Uh, people also forget that 9-11 was not the first attack on the World Trade Center. They tried to blow apart the trucks full of explosive in the basement. Yeah, that was years before that. 97, I think? Something like that? 96, 98? Um, yeah, this, this wasn't the first World Trade Center attack. So World, the World Trade Center, um, I guess, let's talk about that, was, was built specifically to house the commerce of the Western world in it. Um, it's the World Trade Center, not the New York Trade Center. Uh, many, many, um, it was a huge office building that people would rent out to, uh, or a set of office buildings that uh, people would rent out to, uh, uh, you know, do marketplace stuff. And it wasn't just that. Like, um, uh, yeah, I agree, T, with Calvin's. Thank you for the 100 bitties. Um, yeah, yep. I'm not going to go into all that because there's too much, but yes. Um, <clears throat> Uh, people forget, like, the World Trade Center had tons of other stuff going on. Like, there's a hotel attached to it nearby. Um, it was a tourist location. Um, I, I think there was a field trip that day. Um, uh, people would, uh, go there and rent out office space for a myriad of reasons. There were intelligence agencies and federal, uh, agencies that had offices there. Um, in, in fact, one of the, uh, one of the stories from there is they, um, had a meeting set up with some sort of like guy that was going to bring down some part of like a, like a like a like a like a crime syndicate or something, and he was being interviewed there. Um, one of the big wine biggest wine sellers in the world. There you go. I, you know, there's just so many. Uh, ton yeah, restaurant. I mean, there's tons of shit in the World Trade Center. It wasn't just one thing, but it was specifically. Um, it was it was built by this. Uh, uh, I believe it was a Japanese guy. Um, and people initially didn't really like the design and everything, and it was sort of like this ugly thing, these two twin towers. But people started to start to like like it, and it became culturally like a symbol for Western capitalist, like, like uh, uh, I guess, wealth and power and all the, all, all the stuff. It became a symbol of America, um, along with many of the other, other symbols of America we had, including the Pentagon. Um, the other plane, uh, I think what flight 93, 993 or whatever, uh, the one that went down in Pennsylvania, that one was apparently headed, um, to the Capitol. Um, that's, they, they think it was the Capitol. Um, the, uh, uh, although at the time there was speculation that it was headed towards actually Michigan, uh, but that wasn't the case. Um, they thought Michigan because of like Dow Chemical, um, cause Dow is here. And, um, in fact, it's close enough to where I live to where I probably would have been, uh, had to be evacuated because if you blow up Dow Chemical or big parts of it, uh, uh, I mean, that just would lead a chemical cloud into the air that would be really, really bad. But, what, 94? Whatever the fuck it was. I don't know. Um, but, uh, they, they, they were, they were definitely, uh, very brave people. I just can't remember that shit. Uh, Annie, thanks for the 11 months. Um... Uh, they also crashed one plane to the Pentagon, didn't they? Wow, I can't believe people are asking this. Yes, uh, there was a plane crashed into the Pentagon. That's why I said the Pentagon. Um, it was crashed into the Pentagon uh, on one of the sides. Uh, these are uh, obviously the Pentagon is a is a symbol for these things. So this was a symbolic attack. Obviously, they were trying to kill a lot of people. The Twin Towers had a lot of people in them. Three thousand roughly people died between the first responders and the people inside the the buildings themselves and, and everything. And you know, there's people around. Um, debris hit them or whatever. Um, but even prior to that, I, and I know this is like sort of, I know it's spark notes with spark notes, but it's still long. Um, Afghanistan itself was armed by America during the Cold War. Uh, we actually gave the Mujahideen um, uh, 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 like, like fucking weapons and stuff. It's specifically Stinger missiles to take down the, the choppers. Uh, we gave them a bunch of other shit. The Stinger missiles were the big thing that turned the tide. It basically pushed Russia out of Afghanistan. Um, because we didn't we didn't want that because we're America. Um, but after that happened, um, we sort of just backed out and left this war torn country with a bunch of like weapons and stuff. Um, and uh, uh, we didn't like do any aid work. Um, literally, my first memory of my mother watching the news, seeing the side of the Pentagon. Your your literal first memory is watching your mom watch the Pentagon on fire. Wow, that's wild. Um, and uh, well, I guess the Soviets at the time, but I mean, shortly Russia. Uh, very, very shortly after that, it was Russia. Uh, 
Anyway, so you have uh, a bunch of political stuff going on in Afghanistan. I'm not going to get into it, but basically uh, there's this really small group of, of like fringe sort of extremist uh, people uh, called Al-Qaeda. Uh, and um, they're sort of offshoots. Like... There's sort of this this small extremist group, and Osama bin Laden is part of it, and and they 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 have a little traction, especially in like northern Afghanistan is kind of their like little place where it's in Afghanistan itself is like a hellhole. It's it's like Mordor, dude. It's really rough to live there. People who live there are tough as fuck. Um, but by necessity, you cannot be not tough to live there. It is rough. Um, it's like living. I mean, there's nowhere really like it in the Americas. Maybe the middle of the Rocky Mountains. It's really really hard to live there. Um. You can look at some place like Kandahar and just see like sheer cliffs just go straight up. You can't fucking climb those. You have to go around to go like to go like 500 yards. You have to go two miles around some sort of fucking rocky outcropping. It's really bad. Um, do we choke around so much? I forget your history major sometimes. Yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah. And so the the broader context of Afghanistan is. Is is really rough, and I do suggest like like getting into it a little bit more. But basically, Al Qaeda wasn't this like strong force; like th- th- it didn't always exist. And slowly, after we pulled out of that, between the the late '80s and 2001, they slowly gained more ground. Now, what was happening was Al Qaeda, and the the reason this is so ridiculous, Al Qaeda is known as like a hard right wing extremist fringe group of of Islam like even people that are devout Muslims look at Al Qaeda often and go wow those guys are like hardcore I mean to the to 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 the like you you have you seen old pictures of Afghanistan where women are going to college and they're dressed up and they're just normal like in the 60s and stuff um this changed drastically um, over the course of time as uh, not just Al-Qaeda, but Al-Qaeda was one of these, uh, these right-wing sort of extremist groups um, started to get, like, power. And they started to uh, basically subjugate uh, pretty much anyone that was a woman. Um, and, like, they, they had to be full burqa. They couldn't go to school. They would get whipped in the streets for, like, b- nothing. Um, if, you, if you watch any interviews of women that lived through Afghanistan throughout its... Um, history managed to survive that shit i mean they tell you like the ebbs and flows of just like like oh it was violent every day it wasn't fun i didn't feel like a human being and then there was periods of time where i did and then the americans left and i felt bad again like that's that's part of like the problem right now with the joe biden stuff where uh uh big big nuts joe is out here just like well we're pulling out which yes and no there's so much good and bad with that uh teddy bear thanks for the follow um, it's really hard to, uh, be an American and have an opinion on how we ought to police another country. Cause at, on the one hand, we shouldn't at all police another country, but on the other hand, we already did. And then abandoning them is bad. So it's like, what do you do? But it's a whole thing, but we're not even really talking about that. Um, uh, a lot of the right wing power grants were caused by famine because of a drought in Russia affecting green bread. I mean, there's just so much that goes into it. It's too much to, to even get into, but yes, uh, uh, you know super hardcore but anyway all of that culminated into osama bin laden actually a saudi i think he was an engineer he had he had he's a millionaire uh he ends up uh uh, heading this al-qaeda effort uh becomes sort of like this funding and 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 like social apparatus of it the de facto leader and then officially the leader um of al-qaeda and he starts funding these small things uh that start happening uh there was an embassy bombing in africa that i believe he did um i think it was actually two embassies um uh there, there was just stuff going on um and the idea was to you know ex- extend their power and have like this large Her caliphate and and basically way. just reject western sort of world policing and all that which isn't necessarily the wrong opinion, right? Like if you're if you're an Af- an Afghan person or even just a Middle Eastern person, and your only interaction with United States, uh, uh, anyone from the United States or fucking England, France, etc., the Western world is like violence. How, what would your fucking opinion be, right? So, uh, just to clarify, the Taliban students were homegrown Afghan extremists who took over the local warlords. Kind of Saudi uh, provided the Taliban. I mean, there's so much. See, yes, you can clarify as much as you want. It's the spark notes of the spark notes. You can dig into it more. 
uh, we can clarify everything going in. It's much more complicated than I said. And yes, you're right, but it's just it's too much, too much to even get into. Um, all you gotta know is that is that uh, uh, Al Qaeda started to slowly grow. And uh, this was a statement. This was like a big, like we're gonna change the world type thing. And he did. I mean, he did success. Uh, I I I know. I know that there was like, like. It might be an unpopular opinion, maybe, I guess, or just maybe maybe it sounds unpatriotic, but Osama bin Laden succeeded. What can you say, dude? I mean, not eventually. I mean, you know, he got what he got, but uh, and that was always going to happen. But that's not really the point, I think, for them, for that, that ideology. It was an effective attack. It's probably not going to happen again, though. The U.S. is tightly wound now. At least not anytime soon. I could be wrong, but woof. Did we start trash yet? Yeah, literally, yes. Um, so I'm going to continue to to do this. Just you got enough context, I guess, to get into this to see how stupid it is. On the anniversary of 9/11, it was worth reflecting. F- oh, he already, already read that. Uh, we have some planes. That was it. There was no information as to why they had those planes, why they crashed them into certain targets, what it was for. Indeed, Bin Laden initially disavowed responsibility for 9/11. Two weeks after the attack on 28 September 2001, he made statements suggesting that America had attacked itself. <laughs> Did he? Wait, is this the whole? I don't want to read this whole thing. Fuck it. 289 pages, bro. Um, we don't need that. Uh, this was proof of how keenly he was following the fall, and in particular, the rise of conspiracy theories claiming that Bush administration masterminded the 9-11 spectacle as a way of justifying a cranking up of the American war machine. Maybe this terrorist attack was carried out by, quote, persons who want to make the present century as a century of conflict between Islam and Christianity, he said. It wasn't me. It was a government within the government of the United States, he claimed. Of course, he later spoke more openly about his role in 9-11, but this early performance of non-responsibility alongside the striking dearth of, of treatises or explanations confirmed how new 9-11 was, how distinct it was from the real politic era that preceded it. It lacked ownership. It lacked reason. I don't know why I, I don't know what it is about like right wing weirdos that um, they have such a hard time like respecting someone they disagree with. Like and to say you respect Osama bin Laden is like maybe a strong term, but I mean like you should respect the fact that someone was able to pull this off and take it seriously. Like dismissing this sort of stuff is just like barbarism is like the reason it happened. You know what I mean? Like, oh, those guys live in mud huts in the middle of a mountainous Afghanistan hellhole. They literally, the CIA, this is more backstory, the CIA quite literally, (laughs) like, took effort to displace Osama bin Laden from Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, etc., and move him into Afghanistan so that he would be able to, quote, uh, uh, I, I think he would be like, he can't do anything harmful out there or something like that. Like, like literally the CIA was on him and, and knew about him and was like, we'll just put him in Afghanistan where he stays out of trouble. It, it, it's just, it's a lack of, of, of like genuine serious respect because these people live a different way. And don't get me wrong. I disagree wholeheartedly with pretty much any, any person who is religiously Islamic. I, I just, we don't have a lot of common ground surprise, but to, to, to do this all 20 years later with hindsight, still doing the thing doesn't make any sense. It's like saying that, that, that Hitler wasn't a good public speaker just because you didn't like him. It's like, what are you talking about? He fucking charged up an entire region of the world to do mass genocides. It was terribly effective. You have to respect that and understand it and take it to heart and be like, wow, this guy's good at that. We can't. We can't let that keep going. Anyway. Yeah, you acknowledge the strengths, dude. It's ridiculous. Um, as, uh, I don't know how to say this, uh, Faisal Devji noted, I don't know, uh, in his fine study of Al Qaeda, Landscape of the Jihad, uh, this strange, it's not strange, the strange terror movement, it's just new. It was just a, a new way to do it. I don't know. So, it's so dismissing, man. It, it just, it, these are the type of people that make it happen again. The strange terror movement tended to speak in the language of feelings rather than politics. 
When bin Laden did issue further statements in the 2000s before his execution by American forces in Pakistan in 2011, excuse me, <clears throat> he spoke in a style that was more therapeutic than political. Uh, as Devji says, al-Qaeda uh, inhabited a world of hurt. Even when its leaders spoke of traditionally Arab concerns, such as the subjugation of Palestine or later the invasion of Iraq, they did so in the language of humiliation and degradation, and such intensely personal feelings are not elements in real politic, Devji argued. Rather, they suggest its opposite. The reduction of a politics is a, a politics of need, interest, and ideas to the world of moral sentiments. For Osama bin Laden, violence is meant not merely to defend Muslims or retaliate against their enemies, but to gain self-respect. My emphasis. Look. <laughs> I don't even... I, I don't... I, uh, 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 ordinary people did their. Uh, Osama didn't even build, blew up, blew up the building. He, he he organized it. I mean, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed did a little bit more than that, actually. Uh, Osama bin Laden really, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was the mastermind behind it. Really, like it was kind of his baby, his like idea. And then Osama bin Laden funded it and like exacerbated it and made it. I think probably was took a took the sandpaper to it a little bit and made it a little bit more refined. Um, but, uh, it was propaganda. Yeah, of course it was propaganda. I, I don't know how this guy doesn't understand that. Like, just, just wild stuff. Obviously, there is going to be some sort of, like, sticking it to the man feeling. It's like saying that we went to Iraq for anything other than we feel bad and we want to blow stuff up. <laughs> There's a lot more that goes into that, actually. Uh, this was something new. It was distinct from both Arab terrorism in the 70s and the 80s, which was tied to Arab interests and from the various forms of political Islam in the late 20th century. So where the Islamic revolution in Iran from 1979 onward represented an Islam Islamicization? An Islamicization. Hmm. Hmm. Weird word. Uh, of social interest and Islamic form given to political and civil society. 9-11 and subsequent acts of Islamist nihilism, fucking Christ, have lacked any kind of social or political component. Al-Qaeda violence was fundamentally symbolic, in Jevji's words. Uh, it was about effects rather than political interventions, and one of those effects appears clearly to have been the expression of grievance, the use of violence to state and perform a sense of woundedness. Of victimization, it is tempting to continue viewing Al Qaeda as the supreme alien force with its execution of one of the worst acts of violence in modern times. But if we are honest with ourselves, we will admit that its replacement of the politics of needs with the violence of moral sentiments does not feel a million miles away from the cultures of complaint and self regard that have emerged in the West and have come to be globalized in recent decades. This is getting worse and worse. Uh, does the guy not realize that nearly all dictators are demagogues, including Trump, use emotional language? Of course. Of course he doesn't. Uh, Rye Bread the First with the three months. Wish I could stick around, but it's a bit late for me. Have a great night, everyone. Hey, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, he's saying that wokeness is becoming globalized. And he's saying that Al-Qaeda, because there was appeals to emotion, I guess? That's wokeness? Okay. Al-Qaeda and bin Laden in particular were keen followers of fads of the fads and thinking of Western opinion formers, particularly radical and liberal ones. Al-Qaeda. Of course, bin Laden's speeches were peppered with the thoughts of Islamist ideologues and Muslim Brotherhood leaders, but these seemingly religious declarations sat oddly alongside quotations from Robert Fisk and Noam Chomsky, a feverish embrace of Western conspiracy... Th Wait, what? A feverish... Is he saying Noam Chomsky and Robert Fisk have a fever? Okay, a feverish embrace of Western conspiracy theories, concerns about climate change, and a bristling uh, against big media and blood-sucking corporations. Bin Laden was an ideological magpie, always seeking the on-trend woke concern through which his desire to manifest his intensely personal feelings to give voice or violence to his movement's culture of grievances might be the most aptly and impactfully expressed. Holy shit! Um, wow. So uh, uh, you have to be intensely capitalistic and, and conservative to to think that uh, – uh, why does he think Western conspiracy theories are a leftist thing? Robert Fisk and Noam Chomsky agree with Islamist extremism? Concerns about climate change. Climate ch – you should – what? It, Osama bin Laden being concerned about climate change? Is is woke, bristling against big media and blood sucking corporations. <laughs> At times, he sounded indistinguishable from Michael Moore. The war in Iraq was making billions of dollars for big corporations. He said, 
He spoke in a self-consciously therapeutic style, even on manifestly political issues like Palestine. So in 2004, he spoke of the need to raise awareness about the justice of our causes, primarily Palestine. Bizarrely, he implored the scholars, media, of businessmen of Europe to assist in the raising of awareness. One most notable was his fascination with Western environmentalism. At times he sounded like an aging hippie. His plea to Americans to save humanity from the harmful gases that threaten its destiny would not sound out of place as an extinction rebellion gathering. I don't understand why you think this is similar. Uh, we just called anti-MSM stuff as what? Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Chomsky idea of manufactured consent. I mean, <laughs> there's so much that goes into that. So, why wouldn't why wouldn't a Muslim person, uh, uh, like like especially Osama bin Laden, uh? have a an incredible uh, uh, amount of or place an incredible amount of importance on Palestine like what what obviously <laughs> like him him being cared about environmentalism I mean who gives a shit why what does that mean I, I they he's brought up he's brought up bin Laden's environmentalism three times, and this is going to be the fourth. Bin Laden's eco-commentary was testament to the extent to which his worldview was shaped as much by the Western ideas swirling around in the globalized network that Al-Qaeda also inhabited uh, as it was by classical forms of Islamic fundamentalism. In 2002, he reprimanded the U.S. for having, quote, destroyed nature with your industrial waste and gases more than any other nation in history, and, quote, hilariously, he upbraided President George W. Bush for refusing to sign the Kyoto Agreement. Uh, I mean... I don't even remember what that was at the time. That's so long ago. I was a kid. Uh, there is something undeniably surreal about the mass murderer outlaw lecturing Western leaders for failing to adhere to global treaties drawn up by the UN. In 2007, he said, All of mankind is in danger because of the global warming results, uh, resulting to a large degree from the emissions uh, of the factories of the major corporations. Guardian reader? Mo oh, my fucking God. Then in 2009, to mark the election of Barack Obama, he essentially implored us all to join Greenpeace. The world should put its efforts into attempting to reduce the release of gases, he nagged. So, a man that attacked the, the symbols of American capitalism in, in the World Trade Center, the overreach of the American government in the, in the Pentagon, and then attempted but failed to smash the sort of governmental structure. Uh, they're pretty confident. It was either the White House or the Capitol, but they leaned towards the Capitol uh, that uh, the United Flight was going to hit. Um, like, these don't seem symbolic. He's, he's just saying that these are just woke. These were woke attacks. They're, they're cancel culture. <laughs> oh, you're canceled. I'm going to blow up your buildings? Like, what, dude? <laughs> And so because because Osama bin Laden cared about global warming he is he is woke and say and, and and somehow the left and and in wokies should ag would agree with it like they're oh actually the wokies are on the side of Osama bin Laden 20 years later What are you talking about? What? I am not surprised that the U.S. got attacked. I'm not. It got attacked prior. It got attacked post. Of course it would. This, these things happen. Twin Towers, victims of cancel culture. Jesus Christ. So silly. Like, like, and then they weren't paying attention. This is, 9-11 is an exercise in the futility of, of like, the American idealized version they have of themselves insofar as how responsible they are and how like oh we're the security nation we're oh we're the military nation and they just got fucking owned dude by a handful of dudes in a mountain house <laughs> in 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 fucking Afghanistan bro with box cutters they changed the course of world history and this guy is still like, no, nah, actually sucked. I mean, he was a bad guy, but what? <laughs> Wait, why did they attack the U.S.? What do you mean, why did they attack the U.S.? <laughs> they attacked the U.S. for a myriad of reasons. You got to listen to the to the beginning of that when we, when we were talking about it earlier. 
Uh, Bin Laden's XR style declarations, his imbibing of woke fears for the future of the planet. Woke fears for future. Woke. Woke. What is woke? What is woke even mean? It's woke? It's woke to believe in climate science? Jesus Christ. Initially, he's done it again. This is, so Bin Laden is woke because he likes, cli he, he, he greed with a climate change. This is the fifth time he's brought this up as a, as a as a reason to say that Osama bin Laden was woke. He killed thousands of people and then worries about the death of thousands of people in a future climate catastrophe, question mark? Yeah. And yet, the fact that Al-Qaeda... Well, he lives on the Earth. He doesn't live in the Twin Towers. What are you talking about? Those aren't... What? He cannot value American life and still value other life, just like you do. He's a nationalist. Osama bin Laden sucked, dude. Just like you suck. This is the problem because he values like Afghan lives more than he values anybody else's life, which is a thing that makes sense for people to do on the surface, but not overall. If you're a humanist, you're a humanist. He's clearly not one. This guy came up on with the 50 bitties. Uh, in a strange roundabout way, Osama was right when he said we attacked ourselves as an unintentional result of our meddling in the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why he said it, though. Uh, and yet the fact that Al-Qaeda was an environmentalist. Al-Qaeda was an environmentalist outfit. As one as well, what? I don't recall Al Qaeda having strong environmentalist like propaganda. Is that a thing? But even so, why does that matter? He keeps bringing up environmentalism. It reveals much about both the form and content content of this strange and modern movement in terms of form, as uh, Devji has controversially argued. Uh, by the way, did I say thank you to Ryber the first? I did. Uh, old enough to know better now with the hundred biddies. Do you think it's because he was worried about the result of oil extraction stuff where he lived, and uh, uh, to mean he was an environmentalist? Um, I absolutely think that. Well, uh, Osama bin Laden and um, shit, the leaders of the Mujahid Mujahideen. I, why am I saying Mujahideen? Mujahideen. Uh, lots of, frankly, lots of uh, Afghan leaders and Middle East leaders. Um, but Osama bin Laden literally used this uh, uh, sort of like they're stealing our rich, like the the thing we gain wealth from, they are stealing it. I mean, he used that to, to great effect and because it, it was true. I mean, he wasn't wrong about that. A guy can be right about stuff and do the wrong things in response. Osama bin Laden was right about a few things. Not right about everything. Certainly not his uh, religious or political uh, alignments for most part, but I mean, like he's cert I mean, he's pegged America pretty accurately so far in anything he's ever said. He just took it out on the wrong people. Like nobody at the World Trade Center really were the were the people doing this. You know what I mean? Like, sure, it was capitals, but not the workers there, right? They're all cogs in the machine. This is not a pro leftist thing, like to kill laborers and first responders. And no, come on, stop it. Stop. They just couldn't do anything more, more like, like, targeted, I guess. Like, if you really wanted to take down America, you would, you would hand pick who, who goes down, right? If you really wanted to take it down, they wanted to make a statement. They didn't have the, the ability to make a, make a more harsh statement guided towards the people that actually are doing it, but it could absolutely hurt the people that were doing it by killing innocent people. So, I mean, and that's what he did. Um, in terms of form, as Dev has controversially argued, uh, what Al Qaeda and other modern movements, including environmentalism, share <laughs> environmentalism. Imagine being anti environmentalism. Just like the, the the thesis of environmentalism is, hey, we should we should curate, we should we should be stewards of the environment. We should make sure that we treat the earth with respect because we need it to live. That is all environmentalism is. That's it. What Al Qaeda and other modern movements, including environmentalism, share in common in a post nation worldview, a self consciously globalist approach, uh, quote, the issue of concern to them are strictly global. They cannot be dealt with by the solutions at the national level. In common with global movements like environmentalism, Al Qaeda had no coherent political program, says Devji. And in terms of content, the, the temptation of the green outlook to bin Laden seems clearly to have lied in what environmentalism fundamentally facilitates an expression of disdain for contemporary society, especially industrialized society. 
If Bin Laden was anti-Western, which he undoubtedly was, his views appear to have been shaped as much by the anti-Westernism that is central to woke thinking in the West itself by the traditional Islamist hostility to the West as infidel. I have a hair in the back of my mouth, dude. Okay. This is just the worst. What does he think woke is? Woke, woke is apparently saying that we should take care of the environment? Like, what? Disdain for contemporary society in ways. Not to. Does anyone have like 100% disdain for contemporary society? Because I don't think you do. Because we're currently part of it. You have disdain for aspects of contemporary society, like everybody, right? And then do you have contempt for industrialized society? I think we're in a post-industrial world, at least as far as America's concerned. We would have contempt. I have a, a fucking hair. Uh, we have contempt for... Contempt is almost a, too a strong word. Uh, it's not even contempt. For industrialization, I would say it is just understanding that industrialization causes pollution and therefore we should do it more responsibly. Yeah. I think I got it. Oh, I got the hair chat. Oh, God. God, that was driving me nuts. Okay. Mm, my jaws are cramped up. Bleh. Anyway, we're we're moving forward. I have contempt for the disregard of the planet. That you took. <laughs> was it one of your own? I think it was a dog hair. It's usually a dog hair. Brennan O'Neill is basically a pick me. He frames himself as left libertarian, but has absolutely zero left leaning opinion. Surprise. Given its sensitivity to Western thought, wait. Yeah, given its sensitivity to Western thought, especially anti-Western Western thought, anti-Western Western thought, it is not surprising that Al-Qaeda embraced the culture of complaint, too, and even the politics of offense-taking. This was before that. What do you mean? Alongside Bin Laden's reliance on the therapeutic categories of humiliation and degradation to explain why Al-Qaeda and its violence must exist, his movement also embraced an early version of cancel culture. Al-Qaeda, second-in-command, Ayman al-Zawahiri, pursued this theme vigorously in the 2000s. He released numerous statements chastising Western leaders and thinkers for their alleged insults to Islam. In 2007, when it was announced that Salman Rushdie would be knighted, uh, al-Zawahiri, I don't know how to say that, Zawahiri, Hiri, I don't know, denounced malicious Britain and directed directly criticized the Queen for decorating someone who has insulted Islam. That's cancel culture, by the way. A hardcore, a hardcore Islamist extremist saying, hey, don't say bad shit about Islam. That's actually cancel culture. What a fucking idiot, dude. This guy's a fucking idiot. What's this guy's name again? A fucking dum-dum. Brendan O'Neill, the dumbest motherfucker. The dumbest motherfucker. Wow. In 2006, uh, Al uh, Zawahiri uh, entered into the Danish cartoons controversy, the fury over the publication of depictions of Muhammad in the newspapers, uh, Jillen's Poston, toward the end of 2005. Again, he considered these uh, cartoons to be hurtful, insulting. Strikingly, he adopted the Western identitarian view that insists Muslims are more oppressed than other social or religious groups. What? No one dares to harm Jews or to challenge Jewish claims about the Holocaust, nor even insult home homosexuals he said wait so holocaust denialism is woke so we're denying the holocaust and that is that's that's woke no one dares to harm jews or to challenge jewish claims about the holocaust nor even to insult homosexuals he said so we have to be homo these are these are, you have to be homophobic and you have to be anti-semitic those are woke things apparently what? 
How is this even closely associated with leftism? Jews and gays, protected categories. Muslims, permanent victims. He echoed the view of much of the Western intelligentsia at the time, which said that insulting Muhammad could not be described as a freedom of speech issue because it was punching down. The insults against Prophet Muhammad are not the result of freedom of opinion, but rather because what is sacred has changed in this culture, he complained. Um, so I would say... Uh, Uh, his character they made up to satirize dumb pundits, so I'm shocked every time I relearn it. He's a real guy. Holy shit, he's a real guy. Uh, this guy has the dumbest fucking opinions of all time. This is really, really terrible stuff. Um, are there leftists out here who say that you can't say bad things about Islam? Is that a thing? If there are any leftists who say, like, hey, if I... Say, say for instance, I say, Islam... Is a, is, is, a, is a religion that I don't like. And I think that people that adhere to Islam are not living in reality. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> like, I say, by the way, it's the same opinion I have of every religion, basically. Like, most, although some religions are better than others, certainly the Abrahamic ones are the worst. Islam is definitely not a great religion, insofar as, like, I mean... If you take it to its to its uh uh you know in moderation moderate Muslims it's they're not really different from from Christians but I will say the hardcore Muslims because of the political power they have are not worse than what Christians would be if they had political power they would just be a different brand of bad like like for instance if 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 Christians had political the amount of political power that that say uh uh, uh you know um Islam has in in a basically a theocratic state in the Middle East. Um, I think it's pretty easy to say that they'd have very similar policies, right? Uh, LGBTQ people just you're not allowed to do stuff. Um, you're, you're certainly not allowed to uh, 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 have the rights you have. Um, women would have to be more modest. Uh, it just depends on the dress. Like they think burqas are just way worse than you know, oh, be modest. Like. You don't want to cover her face, but you want to cover the rest of everything else. Okay. No um, education for these people, obviously. Uh, incarcerations would rise. Things would be more illegal. They, there would be less freedom, obviously, in general. I mean, like, what's the really big difference? Maybe maybe the Islam is a little more comfortable with public executions, but I don't think that's actually Islam. I actually think that's more of, like, just that part of the world culturally, you know. Because we used to do that shit before. And then we sort of grew out of that as we had less upheaval in America. You know what I mean? Like, we used to do public edu executions, Western people, Christians, all the time. What do you mean? Like, it's not that different. It's just, we're at different sort of parts in our cultural history. I don't think that's specific to Islam at all. In fact, I know it isn't. I mean, you just look at it. So, there's lots of bad things about all religions. Uh, but, I mean, Islam is definitely a really fucking bad one. I don't know. Who says it's not? I don't know. I don't know one leftist person, unless they're a Muslim, that says Islam is a positive thing, and that person would be fucking wrong. Fucking wrong. It, religions are not good for people. I don't care what the. I I just do not care what the. Oh, it makes people feel feel less anxiety about death. Really? Does it? Because I see how they act. They don't seem less anxious about anything. In fact, they seem worse. So. Religious extremism is the root of all of our problems, chat. As leftists, if you are religious, you should really strongly reconsider why. Really genuinely consider it. I know we don't talk about that a lot here in 2021. That's more of like a 10 years ago thing. But God damn it, dude. Religion is really fucking bad. It informs all of our bad opinions. It is the conserviest of conservatism. It conserves the most. It's literally ancient. Can we not? Can we Can we just, like, not acquiesce to religious people, please? And frankly, you're, you're dumb, dumb, like, oh, the moon is in fucking retrograde. That's dumb as shit, too. That has no basis in science whatsoever. Why are some of you like this? Why? What is the point? It makes me feel good. A lot of things make you feel good. A lot of things make you feel good. Doesn't mean they're real. 
Just so fucking weird, dude. So fucking weird. Astrology is bad. In fact, astrology makes people make bad decisions constantly. Are you serious? You should not be listening to these woo-woo nonsense things. Really strongly consider why you believe in stuff. Genuinely. Because you're part of the problem. You think you're all woke and shit and you're a leftist. You're like, oh, cool. And then you also go to church every Sunday? Bro, what are they saying in church? Oh, well, I have a non-denominational church that says, like, you know, hate the sinner, not the sin. Or hate the sin, not the sinner. No. No, 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 no. Nah, dude. No. You're part of the problem. You are complicit in the proliferation of religious belief and the bad things that come along with religious belief. It's like being in the room with a racist and not saying, hey, racism bad, and just letting them do the racism. Just tossing that out there. I don't know what retrograde is, and I don't care about it. <laughs> we're continuing this on. Al-Qaeda militants were early adopters of cancel culture. Oh. Of raging against uh, that which gave a, f- a cancel culture. Again, this outlook appeared to come less from external world of real politic, of interest and aims, and more from the internal world of feelings and sentiment. It was not surprising when Al-Zawahiri... I keep having a hard time with that. I'm going to say al Z who appeared to have been Al-Qaeda's chief of no chief no platformer. What? Celebrated cell in the offices of Charlie Hebdo in 2015. Deed Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, of which Al-Z uh, Al- was leader, claimed responsibility for the Charlie Hebdo attack. Al-Z made a statement shortly after the attack, describing it as payback for the blasphemers as just an attack, as a just attack on a moral Westerners who left their Christianity and assaulted the Prophet of Islam. I have argued before that the two mass murderers who carried out the assault on Charlie Hebdo were essentially the armed wings of political correctness, seeking to punish, to cancel to those who hurt their feelings. This was a theme developed by the Al Z himself in the years before the Charlie Hebdo massacre. The need to censor with violence if necessary those who seek to erase our, our identity. So, do you remember Charlie Hebdo stuff? Like it wasn't just it wasn't just like banal stuff. Like they were literally just like poking this bear. <laughs> look, look, when if you can you be mad at religious extremists for religious extreming when they said we will religious extremist you and then you're like ha ha Stupid, you're stupid, and they're like, "We're gonna extremist you," and you're like, "Nah, you're stupid." Here's the picture of your prophet. And they're like, "Don't do that. We'll fucking get you." And then you're like, "Nah, I'm gonna." And then they do that. Are you? What, is that cancel culture? What are you talking about? That's literally just like terrorism. It's just terrorism. No, I agree. You should be able to say whatever the fuck you want about Islam. I don't care. Charlie Hebdo. Uh, Je suis Charlie, you remember that? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think that any of those people deserve to die for any of that shit. Of course not. Absolutely not. But at the same time, I mean, like, are we surprised that crazy people did crazy people stuff? They're religious extremists. They're crazy people. What do you mean? Same shit in America. Are we surprised when religious extremists here do religious extremist stuff? No. We go, yep, y'all Qaeda. You add it again. Theistic religions are the problematic. All religions are problematic. Every one of them. Theistic or not. All of them. You don't have to... No. All religions are stupid as fuck. Every single religion. Every single religion is stupid as fuck. There is no space. What about spiritualism? Stupid as fuck. Stupid. It's dumb. You do not live in the same reality. Not everyone. 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 No, 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 no. I'm not mincing words. Every single one of superstitious belief, every superstitious belief, every supernatural belief, every belief that has no scientific basis is, in fact, incorrect and therefore really dumb. (laughs) It's just dumb. It leads you to believe things that are not true. And if you do not live in reality, you cannot properly assess reality. And then it leads you to do things that are immoral because they run counter to reality. For example, if you are into astrology, seems harmless on the stage, right? It seems harmless on the face of it, right? But then you get really into astrology and you start saying, making all, not all, but big decisions based on literally mental. I mean, have you read an astrology chart? Anybody who's in astrology. You know you're being lied to, right? 
Read four different astrological charts from four different people. They are generalized. It's mentalist stuff. It's just card counting. It's, it's literally fortune teller stuff. Literally fortune teller stuff. Ghosts aren't real. What are you, what are you doing? Like, like spirits don't exist. The afterlife is not a thing. These lead you to make bad decisions about stuff. Always. Always. Things can work out. But it's not because you made a good decision. It's because you accidentally made it, made the good decision. Like, it's so dumb. Astrology is bad. Astrology is bad. Please don't do it. Don't use it to make decisions. Doesn't matter what you use it for. You don't. It's just. It's wrong. It's incorrect. <laughs> I don't use it to make. Decisions. Don't use it. It is a crutch. It is a thing that people do instead of like actually going and not just astrology any belief system any belief system <laughs> read it as fiction well if you read it as fiction fucking go ahead then <laughs> if you're just interested in shit if you just it's like looking at the jfk grassy knoll like conspiracy theories if you don't believe these things you're just interested in them fucking go for it i think they're interesting too but like my aunt delayed getting brain surgery because the stars were right that's what i'm saying dude this stuff happens all the time Helps me justify things I want to do anyway. All the time. Yeah, but tarot is real. None of it's real. Please, for the love of God, all of you, if you have any superstitious belief, consider the reason why, and I will talk you out of it immediately because it is dumb and wrong. Jeez. Dumb and wrong. But the stars told me to donate 100 tier 1 subs anonymously. I do not like the idea of that, actually, even if I benefit from it. I do not like you making financial decisions based on stars. Please. <laughs> I like tarot and D&D, &D, though. That's cool. Play D&D. &D. That's the place where these play things can live without it really fucking up your life or fucking up somebody else's life. Is it bad that I get paranoid in the dark? No, you are uh, actually um, dark paranoia is an evolved response. So, yeah. Being scared of the dark is a real phenomenon because of our ev evolved, uh, like, little lizard brains. Um, <laughs> great, Dutch. Thank you so much for the four months. Uh, when will campaign two be? Can't wait. End of the month or beginning of the next month. It's really close. We just we just got reading. Um, I didn't. I don't do uh, modules. Um, we're continuing on. We're almost done with this article. Uh, this use of terror as a form of grievance has continued following the sidelining of Al-Qaeda. Recent terror attacks in London, Manchester, Paris, and elsewhere uh, appear to be motivated as much by terrorists' cloying sense of victimhood as their juvenile desire to establish an Islamic caliphate in Europe. What is striking is that these terroristic cult of the victim <laughs> sits neatly alongside a more mainstream cult of the victim. Indeed, mainstream figures sometimes unwittingly flatter terrorists' ridiculous sense of victimhood, their seemingly unlimited capacity for self-pity, by arguing that it is indeed Western society's mistreatments of Muslims that very often pushes them into the arms of Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Wait, 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 wait. To deny... Wait, wait. To deny that America or the West in general, especially their militarism, played a role in islam extremism is to just not pay attention literally if you've ever been there if you ever does are there any veterans in chat right now i know we have some of them any of you on the ground in afghanistan or iraq specifically those two countries are really great examples of why we fucked this up um and i'm very sorry that any of you had to go through that because that shit was bullshit in any capacity, even if it wasn't that bad. But, uh, like, even if you were just like, oh, I was there for a little bit and uh, we didn't really see a lot of combat or whatever. Even that, you see the ridiculous, ridiculous way that America treats us. There are people that went to Afghanistan to build schools and to build, like, like infrastructure and roads and, like, airports and shit that were ordered to destroy them. They built schools to destroy them. Imagine being part of a community. Imagine going to a middle of nowhere America, a small town of a couple thousand people, right? And your job is to go there and to to get relationships with those people, right? And imagine they spoke, I don't know, some sort of language in the middle of America we can't speak, Cajun. <laughs> 
South America, South, South, but you know what I'm saying. Imagine you just couldn't really communicate with them very well, or very limitedly. There was just some something that was just like you couldn't cross. So you have limited communication. You're trying, and these people are also intentionally, intensely religious in a way that you are not, and you are just working with orders. You have orders, and your orders are build schools and infrastructure for these people. Make sure they have like they dug wells and they had water. They built bridges across stuff. Uh, they they helped blast away rock and stone to help people like move around like building roads do you understand how important roads are just roads it makes stuff quicker and safer to travel on in a more reliable fashion so that you can get from a to b in a, in a reasonable pace when you don't have roads things get hard roads need to be used for military stuff so they could respond to um you know they could defend their own country uh stuff like that Th there's tons of this stuff if you ask afghan afghanistan veterans from america from anywhere, but from America specifically, because we're here, um, what their experience like was in Afghanistan, a lot of them, especially if they were part of those rebuild projects, which a lot were, um, talk about how it felt like you're basically there for no reason. First of all, your your mission isn't very clear. Like, hey, go repair uh, 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 relationships with the locals. What does that mean? Um, build this school, build this, build that. And then months later, being told to tear it the fuck down and blow it up. I, I, was just how how would those people feel? How would you feel if in your hometown, your small hometown, wherever you came from, if someone came in, built the school, students started going there, and you relied on that school in the community, and then they blew it up and left? What does that feel like? My mission was very clear. Well, if your mission was very clear, uh, uh, you might have had a, uh, a worse time than, than that, but... Um, uh, astrology is fun. Uh, 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 in D&D, &D, Holly. You should do that. <sighs> Why, though? I didn't hear about this. So they didn't want, um, it's such a waste of resources. They, so so the, the thinking behind it was first off to, um, um, help the, the locals and to repair sort of relationships. Um, but what happens is also, uh, terrorist groups that are within those communities, dress up like civilians and fucking suicide bomb the troops. And don't get me wrong, or, or they shoot them or whatever, shoot at them, um, harming them. So now American troops see their friends being blown up by people that look like the normal townspeople. So now there has to be like this genuine, like you're scared every single person you walk by could be a fucking person with a gun, right? Could be that. I mean, of course you're going to be scared. I don't blame anybody. I do not blame individual soldiers for being, like, paranoid about this or having a certain opinion while they're there. Um, I blame you on your actions, depending on what those are. But, like, like you know, you got you to gotta deal with that when you deal with that. But, uh, I mean, it, not to mention the IED stuff. Like, like they're, they would do stuff like take, um, take canisters of, like, fuel or, you know, whatever, some explosive thing, uh, manure, whatever, uh, bury it in the ground real quick, cover it up, dump water on top of it, the sun would dry it, and you can't even tell someone was there and dug a hole, and then you step on an IED and blow up, and uh, or you roll, roll over it and you see friends die or you get hurt yourself or something like that. It's paranoia. And then so there are places where instead of just being able to walk A to B, it would take hours to walk A to B because you have to walk in very specific footsteps so you're not going to die, dude. You treat everyone there like a black male in a hoodie. Wow. That's a that's a super depressing sentence you just typed to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so why wouldn't why wouldn't people that live through that become more radicalized against the U.S.? I mean, really, just just because of like the the way that relationship has to be. Afghan citizens all have some form of PTSD. Of course, of course, that entire country. I, I, I guarantee you that the entire Middle East really has, if you could sit down and, and diagnose every single person there, I bet that would have the highest rate of mental illness uh, in the place due to trauma, right? In the world, due to trauma. Just, it's just so fucked up there. It's not all their fault, right? It's like, I mean, it's rough. Got some real winners in chat. What are we talking about? Who's 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 up? I'm not seeing anyone, anyone shitty. Uh, it's not called Graveyard of Empires for nothing. <laughs> True. All right, let's finish this up. 
Uh, for example, following terrorist attacks in France in 2015, commentators wondered out loud if discriminating against Arab played, Arabs played a role in tempting so many in France to align with ISIS. A writer for the New York Times argued that a feeling of inclu- exclusion and disrespect can be fertile soil for radicalism to take hold. The Grand Mufti of Australia, uh, th- though he uh, firmly condemned the 2015 attacks on Paris, said we have to look at the causative factors to such terrorism, which might include racism and Islamophobia. One of the most disturbing public debates I have been involved in in recent years was at Trinity College, Dublin, in 2015, where I sensed a level of sympathy or at least understanding for the terrorists who carried out the Charlie Hebdo massacre. I don't understand why you're ignoring why people do stuff. Why why are conservatives so bad at just reflecting on the reason why stuff happens? What is wrong with understanding the reason why things occur? It's it's not sympathy. It's not like Understanding why Osama bin Laden felt the need to attack America in the way he did is good. It's like it's like good it's good practice to put into place to understand in the future if that could happen again. Like it's so wild. Uh, These often seem to be an interplay between the Western culture of victimhood, which sees being a Muslim as one of the highest forms of victimhood, does it? And the terroristic culture of grievance. Wait, what? Sees being a Muslim as one of the highest forms of victimhood. What do you mean? Being religious is to most, to some extent, a choice at a certain point in life. Like maybe not in those areas where they don't know anything. Like other than that, like like, but Osama bin Laden certainly knew better. Not necessarily better, but he was an educated man that wasn't like, you know. They, I think American uh, soldiers called these people like mud farmers or something because they like they're just blowing up people that don't really have stuff. Like, it's, it's fucked up, but I mean, like, let's be real. Like, people in Afghanistan do not necessarily have the same educational opportunities as most people. I don't necessarily blame that person for being a Muslim. I certainly don't consider them a victim, though, of, like, of that. I, I consider people that to have negative effects under Islam to be victims. Like, but not due to them being Muslim, to them having to endure Islamist extremism. Women are a great example of this. The LGBT community is a great example of this. I mean, leftists, anybody anybody who basically isn't a right-wing extremist in Islamist uh, in, in these certain countries, I certainly feel bad for. And they are victims of other things that have to do with that, but certainly strange. Um... In the late 1990s, the Runnymede Trust uh, included within its seminal definition of the word Islamophobia any view which says that Islam is, quote, inferior to the West. Instead, Islam must be seen as distinctively different but not deficient and as being equally worthy of respect. The fear of Islamophobia has generated two decades worth of sensitivity and even censorship in public discussion about Islam. Uh, it has helped to intensify a culture of separatism and even of injury among some of in the Muslim community if, in these circumstances, some Muslims in the West come to view Western society itself as hostile, as damaging to their identity and their self-esteem. Should we really be surprised? Such self-regarding anguish will, in part, have been cultivated by mainstream thinking around Islam, identitarianism, and defense. This is so fucking dumb. I know I keep saying that, but... Um I haven't seen that. Dead bed, so. um, I don't know that anyone needs to see Islam in any certain light. I, Islamophobia is a very specific thing. Islamophobia is racism couched in disdain, disdain for Islamic practice. That's what Islamophobia is. It's when you call them like... I, you, you guys remember the early 2000s, right? Were a lot of you alive during the early 2000s? Do you guys remember the certain, like, there was a lot of fucking racist epithets being launched at just Arab people? Sand and words. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, lots of lots of references to camels and deserts and sand and and uh, uh, all that, which is probably Afghanistan. Um, mountainous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lots of stuff. I'm not going to say a lot of stuff. I'm not going to say most of this shit. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it's incredibly racist. That's Islamophobia. It's just, it's just racism, but we, we can't call it racism because in America, because we have so much racism that it looks distinctly different from normal racism. I can't believe we have to talk about how different levels of racism exist in the West, but here we fucking are. 
Um, where's your mug from? Oh, I don't know. Fucking Target, maybe? I don't know. Had it forever. Um, sand N word tons. Yeah, but but I mean, like, what's that do, right? Do you think a black person hears sand N word and thinks, yeah, that's a better person? Like that person who said that, that's a good, that's a good person I should listen to. You know what I mean? Like, it's still, it's still like that in a lot of places. Oh, yeah, see, PB and Jake and say literally, I hear that in in uh, Washington, in Chuddy area in Washington. See, I don't hear that very often, but. First hate crime uh, after 9-11 was a Sikh murder because the man thought he was Muslim. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. All oh, that's fucking awful. Jeff Dunham just capitalized on the horrible stereotypes of racism and calls it comedy. Jeff Dunham sucks for that reason, yeah. Keep spitting. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, you must not be from northern Michigan. I'm from central. Central Michigan. Work at a weed dispensary, and I make sure to s to sell them the trash weed if I see them in my store. <laughs> Good. All right, let's finish this off. I'm gonna read them back to back. Islamist terrorism comes across as a violent manifestation of the culture of victim. Wait, did I? No, I didn't. Uh, of the culture of victimhood, it looks to me like a function, or at least a product, of the ideology of multiculturalism. Of the what? What? Multiculturalism, a product of multicultural. In Afghan, what do you think Muslims want? Multiculturalism, if they are in in a right wing extremist area of Islam, like what? How? In what way? Ah, ah, ah. Dude, Alpina sucks. The West's own cultivation of religious and ethnic separatism and the invitation to anti-Western loathing that multiculturalism implicitly makes to certain communities. <laughs> multiculturalism. This guy's just dog-whistling for a, a, a nation? Like, a, what? <laughs> like, white nationalism? Uh, the Dublin ravi rally over Charlie Hebdo were in support of the victims. I don't know if he was at the same rally as me. Ah. Uh. Muslim lovers. Yeah, it would be terrible to love somebody that happens to be Muslim. That would be just terrible, awful. Um, <laughs> this is terrible. From 9-11 to Charlie Hebdo, from 7-7 to the Manchester Arena bombing, uh, what has tied these divergent barbaric attacks together is an absence of interest as they were traditionally understood and the replacement by violent sentiment, militant self-pity, and an urge to punish or erase the disrespecters of Islam. Islamist nihilism is a species of identity politics in this sense. What? It, I feel like he started with, how can I make it sound like a like terrorists are woke? And he just kept trying to, to tie that together. So he says Islamist nihilism is a species of identity politics in the sense that it does it wants to punish or erase disrespect of, of Islam. It has violent sentiment, militant self-pity. What does he think being woke is? What does he think? Because <laughs> when, when we say woke, we're in leftist spaces, we're talking about, like, ironically, like, liberals who are like the dad and get out you know what i mean i would have voted for barack obama twice oh woke like it hasn't really stayed relevant in leftist spaces it was like that for like two seconds where i was like hey be woke but like even then it was always like with this like sort of like joke it was always sort of a joke and then like I know in some spaces uh, people will use that to be like – to say like, you know, open your eyes basically. Like, like hey, pay attention to this shit. Uh, stay woke. <laughs> but no one really says that very seriously anymore. We swapped to base pretty quick. Yeah, it, it's based. Yeah. Uh, 20 years on from that terrible day in, 20, in September 2001 is worth reflecting on the true and complicated nature of Islamist violence. Yes, anyone who attacks or plans to attack our society should be ruthlessly pursued and stopped by any means necessary. I disagree. I actually disagree. Anyone who attacks or plans to attack our societies should be ruthlessly pursued and stopped by any means necessary? I don't know, dude. I'm not trying to nuke people. I don't know, bro. 
I'm not trying to napalm a village to stop a guy. <laughs> what came from black culture? Oh, yeah. A lot of things, dude. We like to steal that shit, dude. Uh, we, <laughs> like, literally ask any, any like, mainstream black thinker about anything uh, uh, in regards to, like, cultural impact of black people, and they will go on a very factual and very impassioned speech about black excellence and the way that that uh, that culture is is monetized um 20 years on from that terrible day blah blah, blah. Uh, uh at the same time let us explore honestly how the regressive ideologies of identity victimhood and censure mixed with neo-fundamentalist islamist dogma to give rise to forms of violence that threaten our lives and our liberties and we cannot do that without freedom of speech including on everything to do with islam uh look at this fucking guy this guy wishes he was matt walsh <laughs> That sucks, dude. That's a bummer. Is this a top that spins forever? Why are they sending this to me? Why do I? Why would I want a top that spins forever? Uh, Brendan O'Neill is a dumbass, dude. This is so stupid. Victimhood. I mean, victimhood. So there's a big difference between like trans people saying "use my correct pronouns, please" and literal years of warfare in your country with bombs like what it's victimhood in name only that it's similar like one is a societal thing one is just societal where we're where 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 people are out here and saying hey i am experiencing xyz which is negative for me socially you know, homophobia, racism, whatever, transphobia, whatever's got going on. Please, I would really like to see a change in that part of our society so that I can be treated with dignity. Osama bin Laden was not saying, like, oh, please treat us with dignity. Oh, oh, societally, we can work this out. He was saying, no, motherfuckers, you are an apparatus of violence around the world. And in response to that, I will do more violence. It's not really the best thought out thing. However, I mean, Mormon Jesus. Successful. Xanders, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, that, uh, that T basis, thanks for the four months. Uh, as someone from rural Virginia, he sounds like he's from Luden and gets pissed off about CRT. Osama bin Laden was pretty cringe. Yeah, that's a really nice Zoomer way to say it. Osama bin Laden was pretty cringe. <laughs> 